Hello everyone, welcome back to ECMATH. Today we're going to talk about the vector projection formula and how to make sense of the formula. So I am assuming a couple things here. One, I'm assuming that you've watched the video about dot product and you know how to calculate dot product and you know the various formulas for dot product. Two, I'm assuming that you've watched uh, the other video about vector projection so you have some sense of the, the visuals of vector projection. Uh, here I'm really I'm just going to kind of try to derive the formula for it and help you make sense of it. I remember looking at vector projections and not understanding this formula at all, knowing where it comes from uh, or why, and I found it really hard to do these problems if I don't know where the formula comes from. So that's why we're going to make this video here. So first, uh, the vector projection formula says that you have to have two vectors. We'll call this one V, and we'll just call this one u. And your first job is to imagine the projection of u onto vector v. And we always write it in this weird little way. Um, and what will that look like? Well, I'm going to draw that projection in rainbow pen here. So the way this works is you imagine that there's a rainbow sun up here shining down and casting a shadow from vector u onto vector v. Vector u and vector v don't have to be in this particular orientation. The sun doesn't have to be straight up and down. Uh, these could be at a 45 degree angle and the projection would work the same. So this thing right here is that projection onto v of vector u. Uh, and there's a couple things to note about the projection. Thing one to note, it's in the same direction as the vector v. And the consequence of that, thing two, is that it must be a scalar multiple of vector v. So whatever this projection is, even though u is kind of the main vector, this is actually just going to be a scalar multiple of v. So like right here, for example, this looks like about a, uh, no, not one quarter, three quarters vector v. And so vector v contains the uh, direction, and then this other part contains the size. Okay, so uh, I've got a slightly larger picture here. I'm just kind of zooming in on this. A couple things that we also going to add in here. Remember that the angle between these two vectors uh, we'll call theta. Then what I'm going to do is uh, kind of label the size of this triangle. So I know that the opposite side of this triangle would be the uh, magnitude of u times the, nope, times the sine of theta. Why can't I just write u sine theta? Well, magnitude of u is the length of the side. So here I write magnitude of u sine theta. And I know the length of this green triangle will be magnitude of v, uh, no, magnitude of u cosine theta. Why is that true? Well, because cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and hypotenuse is the magnitude of vector u, whatever magnitude that is. So then the adjacent must be magnitude of u times cosine of theta. All right, so that actually tells me the size of the projection. So this is the magnitude of the projection. And the direction, we already said, is going to be the same as v. So if I know the magnitude of a vector, and I know the direction of the vector, I should be able to come up with an equation for the vector. Uh, and here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to take my vector v. And I'm going to make a new vector. I'll call it, I don't know, v, v prime or something. That's v divided by the magnitude of v. And what's special about this is that it's a unit vector. So that's like over here. I'll draw it in orange maybe. v prime. That is uh, in the same direction as v, but is only a magnitude of 1. And the reason I want it to have a magnitude of 1 is that I can scale it up or down. So I'm going to take this v prime, v divided by magnitude of v, 
than a fancier V. And I'm going to multiply it by magnitude of U cosine theta. And this should equal the projection of U onto vector V because I'm taking the unit vector in that direction and I'm timesing it by the size or the magnitude of the projection that I want. So now I'm going to take that formula and shake it around a little bit. Remember that cosine theta actually is part of the dot product formula? Uh, remember the dot product formula says cosine theta is equal to u dot v over magnitude of u magnitude of v. So I'm going to substitute that in right here. I'm also going to substitute in v prime for this v prime, that version. So I'm going to have vector v divided by magnitude of vector v times the magnitude of vector u times the quantity u dot v divided by the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v. And that's all going to equal the projection of u, on, of u onto v. Okay, well let's like shake this is a little messy. Let's mess with this. So the magnitude of vector u, that's a scalar. Remember that a scalar is our word for just like a single number. All the magnitudes are just scalars. And actually the dot product itself is just a scalar. The only thing that's a vector right here is this actual vector v. So when I have scalars uh, that are matching, I can cancel them out, and I, then the ones that remain, I can group them together. So magnitude of u and magnitude of u cancel out, and all the other remaining scalars, I'm just going to group together, and I'm going to rewrite it like this. u dot v over magnitude of v <clears throat> from the one in red times the magnitude of v from the one over here in blue times vector v. I'm going to put this first thing in parentheses because what I want to remember is that this is just a scalar. That's just a number, right? Because u dot v is a number uh, and both magnitudes are a number. And so we have kind of done what we wanted to. We found a scalar multiple of v that will equal the projection onto vector v of vector u. And this is that formula for vector projection that you've seen in your textbook. There is one other thing you can do with this formula, uh, if you'll forgive me here, let me scroll down. Uh, it's one of those vector facts that the magnitude of v times the magnitude of v is equal to the magnitude of v squared, I'll put my little symbols on, and that's actually also equivalent to v dot v. Uh, why is that true? Well, magnitude of v is uh, v1 squared plus v2 squared, and then uh, square root squared, so those square roots and squared roots cancel out. Well, what happens when you do v dot v? Same thing, you multiply the first components, then you multiply the second components. So since uh, magnitude of v times magnitude of v is actually equal to v dot v, another way to write this formula is as u dot v divided by v dot v times vector v. And this looks like there's a ton of vectors in here, but it's really important to remember, of course, that this is just a scalar, and the only vector part is that actual vector v. So I'm just going to keep it short and cut things here. Uh, that was the vector projection formula and specifically uh, understanding the formula. Now, uh, there's a lot of other places you can look for examples. You can look at some other videos. You can look in your textbook. Um, or you can, of course, email me the questions. But that was just our way of deriving that vector projection formula. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, please you know, subscribe to the channel. Uh, email me with any questions. And I will see you next time.